Hello everyone, um, good day, wherever you're joining us from, and thank you so much for joining another episode of the Astrology Coffee Chat. And before I go on, I think I want to say congratulations to all accepted, uh, accepted applicants. Um, congratulations everyone, and if um, you were not accepted to the contribution stage, um, please, I want to encourage you to apply again. We have our past um, interns that applied the first time, they didn't get in, and they applied again the second time. But for those of you that um, were able to like make it to this second stage, which is, which is the app application stage, which is a stage where you're going to be picking your projects on your own, you pick any projects you want to work on, and you start contributing and engaging with other uh, applicants like you. I welcome you to this stage, and trust me, I know, I know, I understand how you feel about this. I want to see it in the comment section if you have been accepted and how you feel when you saw um, that notification on your dashboard about being accepted into in in the uh, into the contribution stage. I understand that you feel right now. Some of us are overwhelmed. Some of us are newbies. We don't know where to begin. And um, today I have a uh, special person among us here. They have volunteered their time to share their experience, to answer any question you might have. I understand, and I'm very sure they understand because they've been in your shoes before. They understand like what you're going through right now. And they are really happy and willing to share their experiences and to answer any question you might have. So before we go on, um, let me bring up our guests. And... Um, who we'll have them introduce themselves. Um, hi, Vani, let's start with you. Hi, Vani, thank you so much for joining us today. How are you doing? Thank you, Amitola, for inviting me, and I'm doing really good. Hello, everyone, I'm Vani Chitkara, and I have been an outreachy intern at, in the summer of 2021 with Open Archive, and it's nice to be here. I hope to answer all the questions today. Thank you so much. Okay, let's go um, to Parishit. Hi, Parishit. Thanks for joining us today. Hi, Omotola. Um, really nice to be here. Okay, so yeah. I I was an outreach intern in 2022. I worked with Modici, and I'm here to answer all your questions. Awesome. You heard that. The Astrichi along Parishit is ready to answer all your questions. Okay, Kumar, how are you doing? Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi, I'm Abhishek, and I was a past outreach in town in May 2023 cohort, and I work with Connors here community, and I'm really glad to be over here and answer you all your questions. Thanks so much all for having me. Thank you so much, um, Vani, Parashit, and um, Kumar for joining. Hopefully, we have our last guest also join us. Um, I can see a lot of emotions in the comments. People said they had tears of joy when they got accepted. Someone even mentioned that this is their third time applying and they got in. I can imagine how you feel. Congratulations, and I'm really proud of you. And I'm looking forward to like welcoming you to the internship itself. So um, don't forget that this is still part of the application process. This contribution stage is not the internship itself. So this is a period where you pick your projects. You just you know show your mentor that you are the best fit to be their intern, and you are ready to put in the work. So you should get ready to do your research to put in the work and to communicate, engage with the open source or open science community that you belong to. I've seen a lot of persons mention that they were not accepted, they feel so bad. I understand how you feel, and I really hope you um, come back and apply again. We can see in the comments that we've had people who, this is not their first time applying, even though we have people who applied for the first time and they've gotten in. So for those people that have made it in, into the contribution stage i guess i am you can keep dropping your questions down so before we go through the questions in the chat i just want to give like an overview of what the contribution stage is what is expected of you and i also want to emphasize that the outreach organizers have a lot of resources on our youtube and ps channel for you um to navigate like to go through these resources are going to help you like to navigate through this contribution stage so I understand you are overwhelmed, but I really want to encourage you to sit back, 
go back to watch this video as many as you can. We have a lot of resources. If you check this um, video description, we've attached like uh, past charts that we had um, to this description. So just sit down, calm down, and go through everything that was discussed in this chat. And of course, if you have any question, we have the activity alert on all social media platforms. In the community you've joined, they are there. All you need to do is ask question, and they'll show up and help you. Um, the associate organizers are also like open to like answer your questions as many as possible but I really encourage you to make use of the resources that are available so that when you are reaching out you are reaching out with a smart question right and people will be able to like direct you to where you should go to so um i'm going to go through the chat but while i'm doing that i'm going to call on um parachute to share their experience. I just want to hear from you. How did you feel when you got um, that notification on your dashboard about making it to, um, into the contribution stage? How do you feel? Um, when did you start, like, um, when did you pick the project? Why? How do you know that this project is the best for you? So let's hear from you and I'll use that chance to go through the chat for questions. Okay, uh, so it, uh... I was really surprised because I tried like two to three times earlier as well uh, to uh, from my essays, etc. Uh, but I didn't made it. But uh, when I got the acceptance uh, tag, it was it was really enjoyable. I know uh, in the comments right now, people are saying that they they cried. Uh, that's an honest, really honest and pure reaction. Also, uh, so to uh, start with, like how I begin my contribution, uh, I shortlisted, uh, shortlisted the uh, men mentorships through uh, like shortlisting the companies on, based on past experience, like which technologies I knew and which I can, which I have experience with and I can contribute to. So. Um, your past experience does play a role in that. Uh, if you are interested in Python or machine learning or something related to that, you you will definitely go with uh, the repositories which are more uh, inclined towards that. So uh, that's that's number one. Also, if you want to explore something new, it's up to you. Uh, but remember, it's uh, it is a time bound period only, so you have to be very careful in which repositories you have to invest your efforts and time in. Uh, so that that's really important. Yeah. Uh, Thank you so much I, for sharing that. Anything, yeah. <laughs> I think you've shared the most important thing, and I really picked two things out of it. Um, your past experience can determine the project you work on. And um, if you are new, or even if you are not new, you have past experience, but you are intentional about trying something new, you're welcome to like pick any project that doesn't have anything to do with your past experience. And this is just me adding to that point that even if you're a newbie, go through the project description. The last coffee chat we had, um, Sage explained, um, the project that newbies can work on, um, especially the skills level. I think I'm going to give that to Vani to like uh, emphasize on, and in that way also share our experience. Yeah, so like many people here, I was the one who, uh, yeah, am I audible? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, so like many people here, I was also like, I got in when I applied for the first time, so it was very overwhelming because i didn't have any experience contributing to open source like especially without reaching and the format that it has so for a beginner it definitely can be overwhelming but like from the place i came i only knew a little bit of web development and designing so it was kind of uh, overwhelming for me to pick up projects because many of them required tech stacks and let's say python and javascript and they required a lot of you know expertise in that so for a beginner it can be difficult but the best thing is to go through the project descriptions again and again and shortlist based on the tech stacks i know it can be difficult and since it's a time bound period as pariksha told but then again you should better chance on your tech skills that you already have and if you want to learn anything new that's totally okay since you are 
you know you always keep on learning in tech but it's the best to pick on those projects as a newbie that you already have some knowledge about let's say i picked some projects regarding graphic design and social media and web management because these are the things i already have some experience with so the best way to contribute during this time is to pick those projects that you already have some you know background with and some experience with as a newbie because it can be overwhelming but you got this awesome awesome thank you so much um for adding that um i also want to emphasize on the fact that it is okay for you to have like little experience in a particular um just skills like you only have a little experience this internship is where you learn and grow that skills right in as much as you are open to like learning new things the little skills that you think you have if that is what you see in that project that make you choose that project this is also an avenue for you to like learn more and grow that particular skills so i'm going to throw this question to kumar um hi kumar we had someone asking if they need to create like a relationship with the mentors and does it determine how successful you are? You might want to answer this question and also share your experience because people want to know what made you stand out, you know? Mm -hmm. Why did your mentor pick you over other applicants? So you might want to answer that question from that perspective. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Mutalo. Um, so, when I got the mail for the outreach selection, uh, I was literally cried at that time because I was trying to get an internship for almost like two years and I was getting anything. And before outreach, I was just contributing to other open source projects just to get my hands dirty with different uh, tech stacks. But my main focus was on the development using Python technology. And luckily when I got in, uh, for in the contribution stage in the outreach, uh, I see there were a lot of projects and it was quite overwhelming for me to get started. But when I read the mail, how to get started with the projects, then I uh, jump into many organizations and try to contribute and see what kind of projects they have and uh, what the project uh, they have proposed in for this uh, outreach internship. And then I stuck with my project at Kernel CI, which is KCIDB, uh, whose main tech stack was Python dash scripting, which was particularly aligned with my tech stack experience that I have previously. So I went over there and tried to contribute as much as I can. And there were three participants in my community who were contributing to that particular contribution stage. And I would say that, um, creating a relationship with the mentors would quite benefit you because um, when I got selected um, in the end, then I asked my mentor why they have picked up me. Then he just simply asked me that the connection that I built up, the more questions that I asked in the community and which was really showing up to the mentor that I'm really interested in into their organization and I am the person who can they rely on. So uh, just do contributions as much as you can. Do uh, contributions that are relevant to the project, not just fixing up some typos or those things. Pick some issues that can leverage the project. And I guess um, every project has the outreach uh, tag on to the, their issues on the project repos so that you can easily navigate which issues you have to work on to the contribution stage. And if you might start in some position, then just ask the mentors, they will would be really happy to help you out. So yeah, I, I mean, like the more you contribute, the more it shows to the mentors that you can be trusted in future to have an internship into that particular organization, so yeah. Thank you so much for adding that. And I love the way you like explained it because um, there is um, there are different ways to actually define your relationship with your mentor. 
the way you work on the project, the way you ask smart question, you know, not going um, to ask questions that the mentor already provided answer to probably in the project description. Your mentor will also um, value the relationship if you, um, maybe you seek for more help in the community, you try to get more help in the community because trust me, your mentor has a lot of applicants they have to answer your question and if they see you as that applicant who before you like reach out to them you have done your own research to know more about the project or that particular question that you have you have leverage on the power of community that the pro that backs the project or maybe say you ask project uh, you ask question in the open channel to say i'm working on this project and i'm stuck or you ask your question in the direct way saying i've been able to do this research this is what i've come up with but this is the struggle i'm facing i need someone to help me you know that way your mentor will see that oh this person has actually done their research this person has actually reached out to the community and this person knows actually where they are going that is what i mean about um, when i say access mass questions so that way your mentor knows that this particular applicant is actually going to be the best because they can actually undo tax on their own. And if they get stuck, they know how to ask questions. And they will, because your mentors have um, other time commitments as well, they know you are ready to like use the, um, the other opportunity that around you, right? They, they know you are ready to use that opportunity before you come back to them. So in as much as your mentor is um, readily available for you, understand that this um, contribution stage your mentor has a lot of applicants that they are going to like attend to so it will be very good for you to maintain your relationship with your mentor to do your own premium assignment um thank you so much um um kumar we i can see one of the associate organizers in the comments answering some of the questions as well um thank you so much to the special shout out to stay that in the comment section um so we have one more person join us we have pata hi pata do you want to like introduce yourself before we move on hi picture did i pronounce that well um okay i just want to confirm you are there all right um so let's go to the next question i know tida has explained this uh tida has already answered this but i want our guests any anybody can jump on this question we have seen this question come over and over again in the comments <laughs> can you contribute to more projects and i want you to like explain this from your own experience using your own experience uh, i can see vani wants to go yeah i'd like to because uh i contributed to three projects when i was in the contribution phase but there was a big catch because at that time we had online classes because it was the time of the pandemic but like owing to the current scenario it's just go with only two projects because it's gonna take a lot of time for you and let's say even if you give four hours a day to your projects that you're contributing to it's more than enough because some days it might be more than four hours some days it might be a little less but all in all like if you are giving at least 25 to 30 hours per week two two projects is more than enough so like owing to all other time commitments that you might have it's best to select only two projects if you have more time to give nobody's stopping you but ideally you should be doing only two projects so that you don't get overwhelmed with all the contributions you're doing and all the juggling you'd be doing at this time Thank yeah, you I want to that. add add to that. Um, yeah, so a lot of time goes into setting up that projects locally. So it's it's really beneficial for you to at least shortlist two to three um, organizations firstly, uh, and then what uh, what's suited for you and which issues you are able to solve, you should select based on that. So that's that's the tip. Okay. Um, so I'm going to throw this next question to Kumar and Bar Barishit. Um, so this is the question. Is it okay to switch or leave a project halfway? Example, I have indicated 
in the projects, but I found another project that really suits my skills. So it is, it, is it okay to leave that first project that they started working on to start another project? Yeah, it's yeah. completely okay. Yeah, it's completely okay if you want. Like, it particularly depends upon what project uh, you like. And it's the best thing that you should also only uh, contribute to those projects uh, with whom your skills are aligned with. Because um, when you contribute to a project according to your interest, then you can contribute more into that particular project rather than the project that you don't know about. So yeah, you can just uh, do whatever you like. Choose projects that you, whose skill sets might incline with your skills that you know. So yeah, choose those ones. Yeah, I want to add to that, like sharing my experience. I also started uh, like by introducing and going to each Slack channels of different communities and introducing myself and uh, feeling like very complex where to start and what to do. So it's it's completely fine that you go every places, have their taste and choose your choose the best. Okay, um, I think we have something similar to this. Um, let me. Okay, so this is another project. Um, I can see our guest in the backstage. Let me add. Hi. So, um, the next question we have is: Does the time of contribution play a vital role in being selected for the internship? Do I have more chances of being picked if I contribute early? So, let's look at this question in this form. Is starting like if you pick a project early and starting you start to contribute to the project early, would that make you like a good candidate for the internship? Like without increase the chances of being selected, or if you wait till like say you spend a lot of time doing research, you spend a lot of time answering questions, going to read resources, which actually I thought you should have done before the contribution stage, but Let's ask our uh, past interns from their from their experience. Who would like to go first? Vani, do you want to go first? Yeah, I think the time of contribution does play a little bit role because if you start early, you can pick on more vital issues to the community. But mm -hmm. if we see in, in the like long run, then even if you start a little bit late, but your contributions are very, you know, let's say very important for the community, they won't actually see that at what time did you actually start contributing. Some people may have some things coming up when they actually got accepted and due to some issues, they might not get, get the chance to get Get started with the contributions as soon as they get selected but it's totally fine at the end it actually matters that what is the level of contribution you did it and how important it is for the community like the contributions you made and the relationships you made with the mentors and the fellow applicants as well that's what i'd like to highlight because it's not a it's not a competition here it's more of like a collaboration you collaborate with people you help each other solve issues that you're facing so i think time wouldn't matter but it's always a good thing to get a head start as early as possible okay um i would also like to add that i encourage you to start as early as possible and that is why we said like we have a lot of resources we expect you to have gone through before now and please note that any project can close their project. They can close their project from having new applications, uh, new applicants work on them. If the mentors or the community coordinators feel like they have enough um, applicants working on the project. So they might close the project. So you might be thinking, oh, I want to work on this particular project. I want to come back, um, say, next week or second week on the contribution stage. And by the time you come back, this particular project is close to new application applicants. So you, uh, we encourage you to like start as early as possible. Ask question. You get better on it. Don't wait for the perfect time before you start. Just start it. Okay, um, so we have another question. How do I reach out to mentor to express my interest in a project? So our other guest, Pata, is going to be answering uh, most of this question. Um, she will join Tilda in the comments, answering the questions. 
Uh, thank you so much for doing that. Um, so for this question, which of our guests want to go first? Yeah, yeah, I can answer this. Okay, so uh, generally organizations have their Slack channels uh, mentioned in GitHub repositories as well. So they have like an introduction for outreachy applicants uh, and they have a very detailed document uh, placed placed there, like how to start, get started, how to set up everything locally. And they have uh, also uh, mentioned the Slack or uh, whatever way of communication they generally use for their team as well. So, so, so that they are really easy to contact. Just one thing to note, just don't say random highs, hellos. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, and okay. also don't DM mentors. Just put everything into the public channel. Awesome, awesome. So I'm trying to go through the questions that we have. Um, I think we've answered this. Hmm. So this is another question. Please, how do I navigate to contribution please, um, page? When I click on the email I got, it says a contribution is required. I think I'm going to answer this. So for all um, applicants that have successfully moved from the initial application stage to the contribution stage, before you can get to the internship stage, you need to make at least one contribution. And this is um, another chance for us to like emphasize on the fact that whatever whatever contribution you are making, you should record your contribution because you are going to be expected to submit a final application. So we have a video chat on how to submit your final application in the description. Please read it. So go to your actuary dashboard, check the projects that are there, follow the description. Each project has what they require you to do. Maybe they want you to reach out to the mentor force, they want you to join the community, whatever they want you to do read the project um, documentation or description rather and follow the steps that have been highlighted um i don't know if any of our guests want to add to what i just mentioned okay um let's move to the next question then Oh, okay, this is another very good question. Is it possible that you can contribute to two projects and still not get selected for the internship? Hmm. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to leave this to the past three interns. Anybody can come up to speak on this. Um, um, Vanin, do you want to like answer this? Um, yes, it is possible actually, but it's not a big deal because then you can apply the next time as well. So if you contribute and let's say the community finds some other people who are more fitted to be the interns right now, it's not the time to be disheartened. It's a time to reflect back at how you contributed and how you can be even better the next time. So even if after the contribution period you are not selected, then you can always come back, always apply the next time and still contribute again. And hopefully the next time you'll make it. So make it and, uh, you know, by the time you're applying for the next cohort, just work on your skills, increase your skill set, increase like uh, the way you com communicate, work on that so that the next time you come back, you have more ways that you can contribute to the community and more chances of getting selected. So to add to what Vanin just said, I need you to enter this stage, this contribution stage, with a positive mindset. Forget whatever you've heard about the, um, the period being overwhelming, being competitive. Once you had the chance to get to this stage, and you're going to prove to yourself that you can do it, right? So, and whatever the case is, you're going to learn something in this stage. So that even if you're going back, you didn't get to the internship, you're going back, you're not the same person that started the application from the initial application stage. Now you have more experience about that particular project, you can stay back with that project or pick another project and continue enhancing your open source skills, contribution skills, 
and get ready for the next application. So next application, when you apply again, you already know your way to navigate this community. You already know your way to answer questions. You already know what to do. So this is just um, like a step, like it's also a step for you like to get better in your communication, your skills and every other thing. So I need you to be positive. See this stage as a learning stage a stage where you need to prove yourself, but at the same time, you are going to be kind to yourself to make something out of it. Is it that you get to the internship or you learn in one or two ways? So I need everybody to be positive on that. Um, I'm trying to look through another question. So um, I can see Pata and Trida already answered most of the questions, but we have more questions. Please drop it in the chat. Our mentors, are, our past interns are ready to answer the questions. So um, let's move on. And I'm going to start from Kumar, then we move to Vani, then um, Varushit. Tell me about um, your contribution phase experience. I mean, were you overwhelmed? What were the challenges you faced as an individual? How did you navigate these challenges? And what do you think you did that made you um, like the best applicants during the period that made your mentor like um, pick you over other interns? So uh, other, other, over other applicants. So let's start with Kumar. Okay, so yeah. So the most challenging part for me in the outreach internship was not the internship, but it was the contribution stage that I really enjoyed a lot because of the collaboration that I was doing with other fellow applicants who were contributing alongside with me into the same project. So my project was basically um, built upon the Python and Bash scripting tech stack. And at that time, I, was, I didn't have any experience with the Bash scripting. And there were some issues regarding with that particular technology that I have to use in order to solve that particular issue. So what I did was that before that, I picked up those issues that I can solve. And because I was the early um, ap applicant into the project, into my community, uh, I was the first outreachy applicant who pop up into their Slack channel. So it gives me a, an edge to have some issues that I worked on and submitted uh, the PR on the same day when I received the mail of getting selected for the contribution stage. And after that, there were some issues that were regarding bash scripting that I didn't knew. So I just went to the YouTube and learned about the basics of it and just tried to work on those issues. And whenever I got stuck, I just uh, asked some questions to my mentor and just uh, post the link to the channel and just ask like, hey, I am trying to solve this issue and I'm facing these issues. So if you could help me out, and the mentors just gave me some hints about how I can navigate and solve that issue. Then I just um, solve them. Apart from the, apart from my own contributions, um, I would highly recommend other contributors to also help their fellow applicants who are also trying to contribute to the same project because that will show to the mentors that this particular applicant is not just a competitor. It, it is also trying to help other people and try to be a more collaborative in nature. And that's a plus sign uh, because it's one of the criteria that uh, mentors see in an applicant while choosing the best applicant for the internship round. And I help, I guess, two to three issues to other applicants who were trying to solve an issue. And yeah, apart from this, uh, also ask good questions, not just say, hi, uh, this is the issue and just paste the link. Try to explain things. What are you trying to do? What things you tried and what issue you are facing? Try to ask a detailed question into the channel so that mentors can help you more easily. And during my contribution stage, my mentors one told me that a good question is half the solution. So keep that thing in mind uh, while contributing. So yeah, that's the thing. 
Awesome, awesome. I've learned a lot from there, but thank you for uh, like sharing um, those insights. Um, let's move on to Vani now. Yeah, so as soon as I got the meal that I got selected, I ran back to my home and I opened the list of projects. And honestly, I had a challenge shortlisting because as a newbie, I didn't have a lot of skills at that time. So it was very hard for me to figure out that what projects would actually suit the limited tech skills that I had at that time. So I short shortlisted about five projects. I went there, introduced myself. And as somebody asked before, it's OK to leave projects in between. So I went there, I introduced, and then I figured out that, OK, this is still something which is not currently suited to my uh, skill set. So at the end i narrowed it down to three projects and those three projects they had very different domains so one of them was based on graphic designing one of them was based on social media and outreach increase so it was more of a community building time and the third was third one was core web development so i worked on three different domains and that was very exciting i, I got the chance to learn a lot of things at that time and I think the thing that makes you stand out in the eyes of your mentor is obviously being collaborative, as Abhishek mentioned. And it's more of like going above and beyond. Let's say they had some tasks layout, but if you see some bugs that aren't mentioned, or let's say somebody hasn't reported any issue already, and you go and do that, that would give you a good edge that you have a good observation. And then you are the one who would go above and beyond to solve the issues that are not even currently listed. So that is something that you can do. Uh, like for my case, when I was contributing to Open Archive, uh, we were supposed to contribute and like, let's say, make a logo for their app and contribute to how they, we can increase the social media reach. I actually went and checked out their website and listed out some of the issues that I was seeing with the website not being like responsive properly or maybe some issues with the CSS. So my mentor was actually impressed and she was very happy that I pointed out these issues and the next time like when they had a new release of the website all these issues got flagged out because of me so i was quite happy that i got to contribute to something which was not in the agenda of this internship so that can definitely help you and you know just think of it as more of a collaborative stage you get to learn you help each other learn and in this process you might be selected as the next intern so it's go in with the learning mindset and you will definitely achieve your goal. OK, so I picked something. I was about to just like answer um, one question I see in the comments um, about, I'm trying to look for the question again. And I think you just like pointed that out in your, OK, I can't see. OK, so the question, the someone just asked is when a mail is sent to an um let me rephrase like when you reach out to your mentor um will the mentor like respond to you immediately to show that they are ready to work with you and i think vani already mentioned it there are so and we can also see it in the chat um we have past applicants who already have applied they've gotten to the contribution stage before and they are answering questions about how you should read the description very well how 95 percent of the question 75 percent of the question you are asked you are asking has actually been answered in the description and how you should be calm and believe you can do it and also i'm going to add that in the a public channel for the outreach applicants for their project community you have experienced applicants like this person that uh, Amina, that just answered this, who are willing to like answer some questions you might have. So when you reach out to your mentor, remember that there are lots of applicants that your mentor needs to respond to. So now imagine waiting for your mentor while you could have as well asked that question in the public channel and a particular intern that have like experience navigating that community would have helped you. So do you want to waste time? I'm not saying your mentor is not going to attend to you, but I just want you to have it at the back of your mind that this is the contribution stage and your mentor has lots of other applicants to attend to. And there are lots of experienced applicants like yourself in the community who can answer your questions. So even as, in as much as you reach out to your mentor to get answers, I will also encourage you to leverage on the power of community. Ask your question in the public channel. So you're not just doing that for yourself. You are also doing that for other country, other applicants who have the same question but haven't gathered the courage to ask. 
So for another person answering your question, they are also not just answering you, but they are also helping other applicants who might have the same question. So that way, you are supporting your co-applicants and you're also supporting your mentors, right? You're supporting your mentors by helping them to answer as many questions as possible. That way, like, limiting the kind of work they have to do, like, it's just the best way. And this is another very good way to have like a very good relationship with your mentor because your mentor will know that, oh, this person is not just doing the technical stuff. This person is there to like attend to communicate with other applicants. And that is another um, very good point of how to leverage uh, um how to leverage and have a good relationship with your mentor and co-applicant. So I'm going to move on to Bashit now to share their experience, the challenges, and things that stood out for them during the contribution stage. Okay. So yeah, when I started, uh, I, I was completely overwhelmed by the amount of organization, by the amount of students. So currently also, I think eight, 800 of you are selected and only 60 to 70 are gonna make it but and this creates a lot of competitiveness in in your mind and and that's natural i would say uh, when i started uh, i like introduced or uh, tried setting up repositories in local environment for two to three different organization and i was completely overwhelmed to be honest uh, it was very 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 difficult to uh, to get to to get started that's that's the most challenging part to get started with uh, all these projects so uh, and initially uh, when i contributed to the repositories uh, i i didn't get uh, as much as feedback but that's natural because like 50 of you would be uh, applying for the same organization and you cannot expect a mentor to reply to each each and everyone so so that's practical uh, and the one i actually interned with uh, is is the one i started the at the last so modichi uh, they had like initial uh, task assigned like that before as uh, before assigning any issues to you they wanted like uh, you should know how the repository is structured, how the code flow works. So it it actually um, has a really positive impact. Like you know what the repository is all about. So uh, the initial tasks are as as good as it can be. And the way I started was through these tasks. And I picked after completing this task, I switched to picking an issue. GitHub has right near uh, really nice tags mentioned that open to uh, beginner beginner friendly or specific to outreachy, etc. So you can shortlist on based on those filters. Uh, it's it's really interesting. Also, if uh, if you pick up an issue like just don't say like please assign this to me or uh, i want to contribute this uh, mark this for me etc don't do this start working on it when you have results for to show just say that yeah i, I am creating a pr and men, men, mention the mention that issue and if you have any issues really uh, while completing that uh, issue you can simply ask questions and Asking questions, uh, as Abhishek said, uh, really helps you as well to solve this issue. Uh, sharing my experience, uh, there are there was a lot of time when I was typing my questions and I got the answer myself. So how to how to solve that basically? So uh, don't be afraid to ask questions, but yeah, show some uh, research that yeah I have uh, searched online, I have googled it, Stack Overflow, etc and nowadays child gpt as well you can go there and do some research of your own before asking basic questions so that's that's really important yeah and that's how i started and uh, why i was selected was um, i contributed to a major issue and that's that's the reason i think i was selected because it it 
it took me a lot of time to um, to basically merge that PR and it, it uh, when your PR gets merged, it's really exciting. If you have open source experience, uh, then it's well and good. Uh, you know, you might know what the feeling of a PR getting merged is. So, yeah, uh, that I think that's the reason I was shortlisted. Thank you so much for sharing your experience. And for newbies, or if this is your first time contributing to open source, we have um, resources on our YouTube channel that explain um, how to get started with open source contribution. And please, Google is your best friend. Ask questions. There is a lot of um, persons who are ready to like answer all the ends, walk you through what is expected of you in the community. You might not just do that. That question you are spending hours looking for the answer to. There is just one person that is going to answer you in just two minutes, in just a minute, right? So don't be scared to, don't feel shy to um, ask, uh, ask questions openly, or you can reach out to persons, your mentor, or persons that you see that, folks that you see that they've been answering, they've been helping other applicants with their question. And the outreach alone will be present in as many as possible, if not all communities, except the new communities, I think. Um, so they will be there as well to like um, answer your questions. Okay, um, I'm just going to emphasize on some things that one of our speakers, our guests have been um, dropping in the comments. She mentioned that you should focus on doing quality contribution over quantity. This is very important. It is not um, the matter of I've done 20 contribution. Just like um, Parishit mentioned, it took um, them like a while to finish working on one uh, PR that they opened. And the thing that was the main reason. So I think we'll classify that as a quality contribution. And um, that they, they believe that is actually what made them to stand out. So focus on doing quality contribution over quantity. Um, and please don't forget to record your contribution. The final application for the December 2023 codes will be expected to be submitted by 30th of, December, of October 2023 by 4 p.m. UTC. I think our guest to talk about, though we have like resources on the channel that talks about final application, but maybe you want to talk about when you started recording your contribution and how you submitted your final application. Um, let's start with Kumar. Okay, so um, to be honest, uh, when I submitted my contributions, um, it was just really at the end, to be really honest, I submitted the submit button when the outreach contribution uh, application was about to like uh, it was five minutes earlier the deadline. So I submitted at that time uh, because I was just contributing and adding those stuffs onto the recording stage. So I just submitted all those things at one time just before the five minutes. So if any one of the contributors thinking that if an applicant submits their record before time, then it might increase their chances. It doesn't. It depends on a lot of factors. I'm the live example. I submitted my records five minutes before the deadline. So if anyone of you thinking that submitting your application before the deadline might increase your chances, then it doesn't. But it does have it does help, but you should submit all your records before the deadline. So don't do anything stupid like me. And uh, so I recorded somewhere around 10 to 11 PRs into my um, outreach internship contribution stage, uh, in which I guess I mentioned six close PRs and the rest were the PRs that were closed by my mentors. They won't get accepted, but I still uh, add, added them as my contribution just to show them that I tried to solve that particular issue. So I just mentioned those PRs as well. So yeah, I guess uh, the more quality contributions that you have, it might increase your chances to be a better applicant above other applicants. So yeah. 
Okay, um, Vani, do you want to like, thank you so much, Kumar. Vani, do you want to like, um, tell us some things about that as well? Yeah, sure. So unlike Abhishek, I was recording my contributions as soon as I was doing it so that I don't lose track of it. So since I was getting accepted as a contributor for the first time, I was very eager to record my contributions. So I was contributing to three projects. And for each project, I had four to five valuable contributions that I seemed to be, you know, worthy of getting into my final applications. So some of my contributions were very minor. So I neglected them and didn't add them. But you shouldn't do that. Since I was applying for it, like applying for OTG for the first time, I did that mistake. So put all your contributions and you can also, you know, rank your contributions like the the contributions you think that you are most valuable you can put them on top and vice versa but i rank them like in the order of the contribution like the time so you can do that as well and in my final application i mentioned that what would be my week wise plan if i get selected as an intern so since this is a 12 week internship so I broke down my tasks into 12 weeks and explained that, okay, first week I'd be you know, taking out time to set up the project. And then uh, second week onwards, I'd be, you know, understanding the project and what are my requirements and what all is needed to be done, like prerequisites of the project and so on. So you can do that just to show your mentor that you have a well-versed plan in your mind. Like if you get selected, then this is your plan of action. So that would all that will also be very helpful for your application. So be as detailed as possible and put in and your application should show all efforts that you have made. So this is your chance to represent your contributions be as detailed and as communicative as you can be in this application. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that, Barney. Uh, Pakishit, you want to like also emphasize on this, and I also want to like tell the audience, the applicants, how they can record their application because we got a question about that. Yeah, so uh, I'll start with like create a detailed uh, timeline. Uh, it's it's really important that at least you have in, in your mind that what you are going to do for that uh, 12 weeks. So create, add, add, add as much as detail as possible. Even if uh, you think like it's not that necessary or it's not that significant, just add it. Um, it doesn't matter after getting selected. So the mentors will actually decide what you are going to do that for that week or or for that day i would say so but it's better to have a clear picture in mind uh, that that yeah i am going to work on this issue and uh, this open issue uh, can i can contribute to or uh, this feature i can add so and so and so forth and also, you have to mention the PRs as well, like what you have contributed to uh, till now. So keep a Google document or something like that and keep noting that, yeah, I have done this contributions uh, before the actually for my internship after getting selected, my mentor also suggested that you maintain a document that so they have idea of what I'm doing currently. So so it, it's really advisable that you maintain it from the initial stage as well so that you, yeah, I have done uh, this work and I have spent this much amount of time on and on uh, from what period of time I was working on this. So it's really helpful uh, to show your skills further as well. Thank you so much for that. Um, thank you so much, Vani, Kumar, Pata, and uh, Parishit for us for coming on stage today to answer the questions that our applicants, our uh, December twenty twenty three applicants that are going to be working on um, projects during this contribution stage. Have I think we've done justice to most of the questions, and I want to give special, special shout out to Pata who was um, answering questions in the chat and also to Tilda, one of the astrology organizers who have been answering as many questions as possible. I just want to like um, give a word of encouragement to new applicants out there and even 
persons, folks who are used to open source contributions, but feel in a way overwhelmed about this whole stage, it is okay to be overwhelmed. But I need you to be positive about this. Vani just mentioned that this was, it was a first time contributing to open source through Asfishi, and they don't even have that, um, like, and expert skills, they were just starting out. So a lot of other past outreach interns also have the same experience. And I'm even proud to say, um, Vani got a full-time job after an outreach internship. So don't feel less of yourself. The little skills you have is actually valuable. Be open to learning more. Be open to explore and make good use of the power of community. Be open to interact, be open to engage and be positive. You need to be positive. Maybe we should close with this. I need um, our guests to tell us, like, give the applicants word of advice, word of advice from your end. And also, um, after the contribution stage, let me mention that um, the final application will be should be submitted by 30th of October, and we are going to announce the um, names or list of accepted interns by November 28th, the same 4 p.m. UTC. So our guests are going to close with this. Tell us like um, words of encouragement for the applicants, what they should take note of, and uh, wish them the best. So we'll start from Vani, Kumar, Pata, if you're available <laughs> to speak now. I know you have been answering questions in the chat, and then package it. Okay, so Vani, let's go. So my words of encouragement would be to give your best and use all the skill sets that you have. Don't be shy to ask questions, to help around, to ask in the channel and, you know, be in contact with a mentor. So give it your best. You got this shot and all the best for the internship. I hope you all get in, even though it's not possible, but I really hope you all get in because you all deserve to be here. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much for that. Okay, over to you now, Kumar. Yeah, I, I guess uh, Vani mentioned all of us. I just say that it's just a collaboration, not a competition. Just sit back and just try to contribute as much as you can. Uh, don't expect anything. Just contribute and focus on the project that you want to and help others. Ask questions as much as you can. And yeah. All the very best for your applications. Thank you so much, um, Kumar, for that. Um, um, just a break. We can see a question in the chat, and I think we need to answer that. Is the internship fully for software engineers? No. Bani mentioned she only had um, software, um, social media um, skills, right? Social media management skills. And I'm even happy to say we have a lot of past interns who just um, contributed to documentations, event management. And I think for this course, we have marketing, community management, and some other things. Design can contribute as a designer so it's not just for software engineers i hope we, well, you get that uh very well so let's move on to um paternal for our vote of things if you can speak if you can speak we can skip yes yes i can i don't know can you hear me yes okay. finally so, uh, <laughs> my my advice is okay this is a learning experience and your before reaching here it shows that you had some something in you that the organizers saw and believed in so yeah this is a time for you to like prove yourself do your best you you shouldn't be focused on being selected just be focused on the organization the interest and being able to make something uh contribute something good or quality contributions like i mentioned and yeah even if you don't get selected now you've learned a lot you've made friends you can still always apply outreach you can apply and apply and apply so yeah that's my my take thank you so much and now let's move over to partnerships yeah first of all congratulations to making it to the contribution stage uh, i would yes. say the essay writing stage was the toughest one for me and i know that a lot of candidates get rejected at that stage only so first of all congratulations you have you have fought a really uphill battle uh, to say the le least and now just you are just one step behind getting selected so 
keep going, keep hustling. Yeah. Thank you for that. And in Tilda's voice, um, congratulations to those that have been accepted. It is perfectly fine to feel overwhelmed. Most people do, of course. Most people have you know, felt that way in the past. Your fellow applicants are your collaborators, not competitors. You need to have this in mind. You are not competing. You are collaborating. So work with everyone, support everyone, direct people that might be your own leverage that might be your own trick so see everyone as your collaborators not your competitors thank you so much um tilda for dropping that and from my hand i'm going to say i can't wait to you know welcome you officially to the internship i'm so looking forward to chatting with you working with you collaborating with you more and it's okay i need you to be kind to yourself i need you to be positive and if after this session after this um stage you didn't make it to the in internship stage please come back and apply we have persons who have applied several times before they got in. Come back to apply. And if you have any question at all, our DMs are open on all social media platforms. You can also reach out to the Asuchi organizing team at Asuchi, organizers at Asuchi.org with any of your questions. But remember to always ask smart questions. Thank you so much, um, our special guest, Bani Pata, Kumar, Pakishit. Thank you for joining and, you know, for answering as many questions as possible. We really appreciate you. Thank you so much, everyone. That's the end of this um, live stream for now. Remember to subscribe so that you can get notification when we have another interesting chat um, happening. And um, see you next time. Bye-bye for now. Bye. Bye.